Good morning, church. Ooh, that, that's loud. Good morning, church. Oh, y'all sound a little dry this morning now. I'm going to need everybody to go and stand to their feet. Can y'all say good morning again? Good morning. Y'all act like y'all ain't happy this morning. We alive. Some people ain't alive this morning. Good morning. What's going on, GOG? All right. We blessed over here now. This church over here on this corner. Come on now. Hey, David said, I was glad when they said, let us come into the house of the Lord. You made it in the house this morning. Whatever you need right here in this house. You got to know if you need strength this morning, it's in this house right here. You should be happy right now because you made it here. If you need healing, it's right here. God can fix whatever problem you got this morning. You just got to be willing and obedient to give it to him and trust it in his hands. You can't trust it in man's hand. You can't trust it in the government. You got to put it in God's hand this morning. Y'all should be happy right now. We made it in this morning. Come on, put a smile on your face. We're going to try to get through this declaration this morning. Come on now. All right, repeat after me. I declare that I win. Oh, y'all didn't say that like no winners this morning. You got to say that like you're a winner this morning. Really believe you're a winner. I declare that I win over everybody all the time. And my God always causes me to triumph. To triumph. No test or trial of my faith will cause me to give up, cave in, or quit. Or quit. Regardless of the situation. I'm not going to quit. Or quit. Failure is not final. And I won't stop until I win. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. And my victory is guaranteed because God loves me. And the shed blood of Jesus gives me a right to win in every area of my life. I win in my marriage. I win in my marriage. I win in my finances. I win on my job. I win over unemployment. I win in my physical body. I went over negative emotions. I went over selfishness. I went over lack. I refuse to be contained. I refuse to be contained by the enemy or my flesh. Ever again, I'm breaking through. I'm breaking through today because, oh, I'm sorry, because I win. I win. I win. I declare these words this day and it is so in the name of Jesus amen 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 let's read our vision okay go take the word of God to the nations starting with our local cities to fully preach the gospel of the kingdom to every creature breaking the power of the devil and setting the captives free okay we're gonna read our mission go preach the gospel throughout the world and train individuals how to live in this world and have dominion over it, to operate in their gifts effectively, knowing that there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. 1 Corinthians 12 and 4. Amen. 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 Glory, glory. How many of y'all know God got a blessing for you? How many of y'all know God had a blessing for you this morning? When God woke you up this morning, how many of y'all know that was a blessing? When he let you crank your car and drive to church, knowing you had fumes in your car. How, y'all, how many of y'all know that was a blessing? All right now. Amen, amen, amen. Glory, glory, glory. Y'all sing with me if you know the song. Come on now. Can I get y'all to put your hands together for me? It makes no difference. What you're going through, you're going to make it. God's going to see you through. Hold your head up. Put a smile on your face. This is another test. It won't last always. So get ready. Get ready. For your blessing. For your blessing. Get ready. Get ready. For your miracle. For your miracle. Get ready. Get ready. For your blessing, blessing. get ready, ready. for your miracle, miracle. I know you've been hurting, deep down inside, 
Let me encourage you. It's gonna be alright. Troubles and trials come to make you strong. Keep on believing. You keep holding on. So get ready. Get ready for your blessing. For your blessing. Get ready. Get ready for your miracle. For your miracle. Get ready. For your blessing, get ready for your miracle. God's got a blessing. All right, now y'all should have said that with me. Now, God's got a blessing. Say it like you mean it. Now, come on, church. God's got a blessing. All right, now I think y'all believe it this time. God's got a blessing. Help me out now. Let's have a little fun. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. With my name on it. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. With your name on it. 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 Woo! All right, now. We're going to try this one more time. Y'all make me a believer this time, man. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. All right, now. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. All right, let's go to church with it now. God's got a blessing. 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 With your name on it. With your name on it. God's got a blessing. 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 With my name on it. 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 With your name on it. With my name on it. With your name on it. With my name on it. With your name on it. With my name on it. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. With your name on it. 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 With my name on it. Point to yourself. With my name on it. Regardless of the situation. With my name on it. With my name on it. Hallelujah. How many know that you got a blessing with your name on it? Hallelujah. Now, if you believe that the hallelujah is deep down in your spirit, come on and shout out hallelujah. 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 My God, my God. Y'all look like y'all ain't happy this morning. Y'all happy this morning. Come on and shake yourself loose this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We know y'all cute and handsome and all. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> God, Come on and put your hands together on this morning and celebrate Jesus. He's worthy to be praised. He's to be glorified. beginning and the end. You're the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. I pray, I pray your name. Your name.
on you. And I don't know if you're waiting on the praise team, but I don't know if you're waiting on the worship ministry. I don't know if you're waiting on the word, but if you go ahead and prepare the table, go ahead and prepare yourself and give them a highest praise. Have your attention because let me tell you about a man who knows all of my thoughts but still loves me. Let me introduce you to this man who won't ever bring your past up again. If you're not too busy, do you have a minute to listen? How about the one who can replace all? I can't really put it in the words, but that's just, just something about me. I don't know everything, but I know this. I know that I cannot live without him. We want to tell you about him. He's our healer. He's my healer. Jehovah Rapha. My savior. My way maker. My way maker. My joy. My joy. My, joy. my provider. Strong tower. My strong tower. But most importantly. And he gave it. His name. His name is Jesus. Jesus. Yes. So sweet. Sweet Jesus. Sweet I've Jesus. I've met a lot of great people, but I realize there's nobody like Jesus. Nobody like Jesus. Because when I'm sick, He's my healer. He's my healer. Drowning in my sins. My Savior. Way my way Provided for me, but most importantly, there's only one name. Peace. 
nobody like Jesus that you can search all over but there's nobody like Jesus you can come and you can go but you'll never find nobody like Jesus can't nobody do you like Jesus can can't nobody heal you like Jesus can can't nobody deliver you like Jesus can can't nobody do it like he can I know that you've been here and you've been there I know you've been with this one and you've been with that one but they can't do you like Jesus can. If you haven't tried him, I double dog dare you to try him on today and find out that there is nobody like Jesus. If you don't know him for yourself, that was the perfect opportunity to get to know him so that when that song comes on again, you can understand why it means something to somebody because there's nobody like him. Live long enough, and you'll be able to see there's nobody like him. Live long enough, and you'll be a witness too that there's nobody like him. Live long enough, go through enough things, and realize that he's always been by your side. When everybody else left you, that said that they would never leave you, there's nobody like Jesus. When you tried to call on mama and she didn't answer the phone, I thank God for Jesus because his phone is never busy. I always get a call through. He don't even put me on call waiting, but he answers every time. There's nobody like him. I thank God for Jesus because what he did for me nobody else could do they could try it but it just wasn't gonna work it had to be him he had to be the one to do it because if he hadn't done it it would have never got done but there's nobody like Jesus so father we thank you for Jesus on today we thank you for all that you have already done in this place we thank you for the atmosphere already being set we thank you, Father, for signs, miracles, and wonders that we know that only Jesus can do. That only the power of him, his death, his burial, and his resurrection can cause. We thank you on today for your mighty hand being in this place. We thank you for your glory that rests upon us. We thank you for the expectation that we have for you on today. We give it all to you because we know there's nobody like Jesus. So, Father, because we know there's nobody like you, we thank you, Lord God, that we can put all our faith, all of our hope, all of our trust, 
all of our belief, all of our cares, all of our worries, all of our sickness, all of our pain, all of our doubt, all of our fears, all of our concerns, our children, our marriages, our husbands, our wives, our jobs, our houses, our finances, everything we can put it all on you because there's nobody like you. So, Father, on today we surrender all as we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise that's due to nobody but you as we decree and declare that it is so. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we give the dance ministry a round of applause for what they did on this morning? They set the atmosphere to remind you that there's nobody like Jesus. And while you're yet standing, can we honor the gifts of this house, our overseers, Dr. Apostle Pamela Burke and Dr. Pastor Dwayne Burke. We thank God and we give honor where honor is due. As a matter of fact, we owe them double honor for what they do. A lot of things we don't see. But trust and believe is being done. We thank God for their children, Jamar and Jonathan. We thank God for everybody in their respective places. You know it wouldn't be the same if you weren't here. We thank you for everyone who feels like they don't have a title. But can I tell you something? You still got purpose. The word says that we're all ministers of reconciliation. So that means that there's still a purpose and a calling on your life. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise, because the Creator said so. And nobody's better than the Creator is. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God on today. I know I say this a lot. You can be seated, because I'm just going to talk today, if y'all don't mind. <laughs> I know I say I won't be before you long on today. And it's just so funny how God is. Everybody's been kind of tapping into what he gave me. If you went down the road on yesterday, whew. for those that are joining us by live stream, we thank God for you because you could have joined somebody else at this time. But we thank you for watching Gifts of God Ministry. And we pray that something is said or done on today that will bless you enough to give God a yes. That will bless you enough to say that you want to come into the house. That will bless you enough to share the word with somebody else. But yesterday, our apostle, when I said she walked that word, she walked it and walked it heavy. But it was still a blessing. You know how you get corrected. I know when I was younger and I got corrected. At first, my face was frowned up because I was like, hmm, I don't know why. But after I had to sit in my room for a minute and I thought about what I did, I was like, yeah, I guess I did deserve that. Yeah, if I didn't do right, yeah, I should have did right and then I wouldn't be in this situation. Yeah, that's the type of word that she walked on yesterday. It had you thinking about where you were, where you're going, and where you want to be. But that word was mm-mm good. <laughs> so today, like I said, I just, just, just want to talk to you a little bit, just a little bit. When I was growing up as a kid, I remember we had a little crush on somebody. We stand across from the playground and kind of make googly eyes at each other. We wouldn't say too much to each other. Maybe our best friend may know that we kind of liked each other. But everybody else would just speculate. Until that day came where you got up a little bit of courage and you write them that note, do you like me? Yes or no? And you had to choose which box, whether you liked them or not. And so you fold it up and it used to be that little square and you pass, pass that over to them. And they pass it over, and you anticipate, and you don't want to look at them, you know, 
too soon, but you kind of keep your head down and peek out the corner of your eye, see if they opened it up yet. And then you see they opened it up, and they look at you, and you look, and you look down real quick, and then you look back over there, and you see them get their pencil, they mark it, they fold it back up, pass that back over, pass it back over, you open it up, and if it said yes, you were like, yes. Then it came where y'all would spend a little time together. You know, you might ease on next to each other at the playground. You on the swing, he on the swing. You on the teeter-totter, he on the teeter-totter. All of a sudden, y'all walking down the hallway together. Then it becomes, will you be my girlfriend? Or will you be my boyfriend? Check yes or no. And you're waiting for the answer. You spent time together, but you still want to make sure that they want to be in the same relationship that you want to be in. So you're hoping that they say yes. It was so simple back then to be in a relationship. It was real simple. It was just, yes, I'm your girlfriend. Yes, I'm your boyfriend. It wasn't a big deal. What we call relationships now become so much more. As we gotten older, things have kind of changed a little bit. I just realized, I went on Facebook. I don't have a relationship status on my Facebook. I went on Facebook and I clicked on the relationship status. You know they got about 12 options for a relationship status? And I went down and I'm like, okay, single, okay. Married, okay. Widowed, divorced, okay. It's, compli it's complicated. What do you mean it's complicated? Either you're with them or you're not. What do you mean it's complicated? It just baffles me that they even have an option that says it's complicated. Because you're the one that's making it complicated because you're straddling the fence. You can't decide whether you want to be with them or you don't. So today, that's what we're going to, that's why I said, can we talk? Because we're going to talk about that relationship thing. Can you turn with me to Psalms 23? Real familiar scripture. Y'all probably like, what in the world? That got to do with relationships. What that got to do with can we talk? I'm about to help you out. Psalms 23, we're going to start with verse 1. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Okay. I'm going to break that one down. When it comes to a relationship, the role has already been established in the first verse. Okay, let me help you out a little bit. It's been established that the Lord is my shepherd. That means his role is to provide. That means he knows what he needs to do to make sure that my needs are met. If you're in a relationship, have your roles been established so that you know who's the provider? Do you know your role in the relationship? Because it says, I shall not want. Now, don't get it twisted. He is the provider. But in that relationship, you also have to provide. You have to provide trust. Because you can't call him Jehovah Jireh, my provider, if you don't trust him to provide. You can't say that you're in a relationship with him if you don't trust him. How are you in a relationship with somebody that you don't trust? So right here in verse 1, he already set the foundation to let you know. His role in this relationship between you and him, is that he's going to be your provider. He's going to go ahead and take care of what you need, your food, your shelter, your resources. It's all going to come together. But let me help you a little bit because you can't just come to him. You know how sometimes we'd be like, you're going to do this. You're going to take care of me. You're going to provide for me. No, 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 no. You got to make sure that your role keeps you humble. Because he tells us in Matthew that we have to come to him as little children. So that means if you're coming to him as a provider, that means that you're going to go ahead as a child. I know my children, when I was taking care of them, they didn't have to worry about it. They won't worry about if bills were being paid. They weren't worried about if the car was going to start. They won't go. It was my responsibility as the provider to make sure that all that was taken care of. So it's God's responsibility to make sure that your needs are being taken care of. So what are you worried about? If he's already established that he's the one that's going to take care of it, 
That means what you need to do is go to them and be like, your word says that you are. Your word says that you are that I am that I am. So that means that I need you to be a provider right now. Your word says that I shall not want. That means that you should be meeting my needs and my wants right now. If I'm doing something out of position and out of line, let me know so I can make sure I get back in position so that you can meet. Because if we were being honest with ourselves when we were children, we ain't always get what we wanted because we ain't always do what we're supposed to do. So let me make sure that I examine myself and even go to him and ask him, as my provider, what am I doing to help you provide for me? Am I doing the right thing? Am I saying the right thing? Am I living the right life? What can I do to make sure that I'm in position for you to provide? Verse 2, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. If you don't have any peace in your relationship, why are you in that relationship? I mean, it's peaceful. I, when I think about laying down in green pastures, all I see is me laying in some nice green grass, looking up at the sky without a care in the world. Still waters? That means ain't nothing troubling them. That means I can go and put my feet in and I ain't got to worry about no alligator, no piranha, because I already know that he's already taking care of it because he's not leading me beside any crazy turbulent waters. He's putting me behind, beside these still waters. He's establishing his role with us. He's establishing a relationship. He's letting us know that he will take care of it all for us. All we got to do is walk in it. So if he allows me to lay in green pastures, that means he's not going to put me in no rough grass. He ain't going to put me on no astroturf. That stuff that hurt when you step foot on it, that means that grass is going to be thick and luscious. It's going to feed me in some sort of way. It's going to feed my need to the point where I just want to sink down in it because I'm so peaceful that I don't have to worry about nothing attacking me. I don't have to worry about nothing sneaking up on me because I have put my trust in my provider. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Okay. So that means those things that in my soul as this relationship builds, he can restore them. As my provider, he's going to restore everything that's been taken from me, everything that the locusts and the canker worm, the palmer worm, everything that the enemy took from me, he's going to restore it unto me. Even those things in the world that I allowed them to take away from me. You mean he's going to restore me? Even when I didn't know I needed restoration. Even when I didn't know that I was deplenished. He's going to give me something that I need without me even asking. He's going to lead me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. That means he's going to put me on a good path. But it's not for me, but it's for him. For somebody to see the glory that's on my life, even though they know where I came from, even though they know what I went through, that they'll be able to see that I'm walking in his name's sake, not my own. Because what I do, I don't do for me, but I do for him. I'm about my father's business. He's my provider. So why wouldn't I want to do something for him? I want to make sure that he's happy because he's providing for me. So why would I not want to make sure that I make his name great? Why would I not want to surrender all to him? All to thee, O blessed Savior. I surrender all. He surrendered all for me. To allow me to have a restored soul, a soul that at one point in time was black and ugly, and I didn't even realize how it was. I didn't realize how nasty and messed up I was. I thought I was all good. I thought I had it all together. But until I came on this side, that's when I realized, man, when I look back at my old self, I was toe up from the flow up. But he still took the time to say that he is my shepherd and that I shall not want. He still took the time to say that he's going to make me to lie down in green pastures and not allow me to have to do something to get it. Now, y'all know, back in the day when you did something for somebody, somebody always wanted payback. Payback was going to come. 
but he's not looking for payback. Even when I was messed up and he said that he's going to leave me beside still waters when I was sitting up there in a rocky boat, he decided to take me out of that and put me in waters that were so peaceful that it scared me. You ever been that way where things are so peaceful? You're like, okay, something about to happen. Something's something going to happen. It's too quiet. It's, it's things going too well. I'm, I'm just waiting for that last thing to drop. But he's restoring my soul. Verse 4 says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Do you have that type of trust in this relationship? Can we talk? See, a lot of times when we hear the other person say, can we talk, we get a little fearful of what they want to talk about now. What, I, what did I do or what didn't I do? When that other person, especially if that's a, your significant other, say, can we talk, you start going down the list trying to think, okay, did I get my honeydew list done? No, okay. Did I fix his food right? Okay. Did I make sure that bill was paid? Most of the time we get fearful, but sometimes when you hear, can we talk, it might be a good thing. Because he's telling us, even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil. That means you got to have some trust to know that while you're walking through some things, you shouldn't have any fear. He has not given us the spirit of fear, but of that of power, love, and a sound mind. So while you're going through that valley, just know that he's with you. He's your provider, and he's taking care of you. It says, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Sometimes we don't want the rod or the staff to comfort us. <laughs> we don't want none of that to be near us. We want to keep going down that valley. Woe is me. Here we go again. I don't know how I'm going to make it through this. I, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. And he was like, what, what are you fearful about? Because I'm with you. I got my rod and my staff right here to keep things at bay, to keep things from you. I got it all taken care of if you allow me to. So when are we going to surrender control and let him do it? So many times we want to hold on to things that he's saying let go. And sometimes we want to let go of things that he say hold on to. Now this, this, this is the one that he really dealt with me with. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. And I was like, Lord, a lot of people look at that and they're looking at people. They're looking at people sitting at a table. They're looking at faces, oh, such and such. Oh, when they did this to me and when they did that to me, oh, they're going to be at my table because I know I know that they were my enemy. I know they were sent to destroy me. I know. But can I tell you how he gave it to me? The way he gave it to me was when I come in, the table is going to be spread. It's going to be a celebration because I'm there. He's honoring me because he is my provider. And so I sit at the table and I'm looking around, and I see some empty chairs. So I'm expecting to see everybody there to celebrate with me because I have found my shepherd. But as I'm sitting there, I see depression come in and have a seat. I see lack come in. They take a seat. Fear, suicide, doubt. Poverty, sickness, all of them take a seat. And I'm wondering why are they there? And he explains to me, as they're sitting there, if you realize these are your enemies. And you wonder, how are they my enemy? Because they will cause you to not walk where God wants you to walk. If you're walking in all those things, it will cause you to be stagnant and fearful. And you're like, but all this is for me. It's supposed to be a celebration. Well, it is. Because I want them to see what I'm about to do for you. Yeah, you survived all that. And they didn't think you were going to survive depression. I used to be real depressive. 
to the point where I didn't even realize I was walking in depression. Because I would put on a face when I went outside the doors. Nobody could ever tell. But when I got home, curtains would be drawn. I would just cry for no reason. When I felt pain in my body, when I was going through sickness, nobody would know because I would put a smile on my face, walk with a mask on. When I walked in fear, you wouldn't know it. I had some good mask. People couldn't understand because you always so happy. You always so cheerful. You always look like, but see, when you're in the world, you learn how to hide things. You learn how to cover it up real well to the point where the world don't even realize that you're going through. As a matter of fact, they don't even care, to be honest with you. You know how they don't even care, to be honest with you. You know how they ask, how you doing? And before you even answer, they still walking by because they expecting you to say fine. And if you don't say fine, and you trying to explain to them what you're going through, and they're like, mm-hmm, mm. oh, oh, okay, well, I, I, I got to go. Because they really don't want to hear about what you're going through. But see, my provider, my shepherd, he wants to hear all those things. He knows that I'm going through it. But see, he had to bring all them to the table. All them that tried to take me out. All those spirits that tried to sit on me. Especially when I was suicidal and I sat there and I looked at the pills and said, I wonder if I take all of these while I wake up and if, if I don't, will anybody care? Will anybody? I wonder who would be at my funeral. I wonder who would take the time to mourn for me. I'm just being transparent. I'm, I'm letting you know about me. I can't tell you what you had to deal with. I'm, I'm just telling you about me. And I would sit back and I would wonder. Who else? Okay, if I'm, if I'm, poverty is sitting here, and, but I know I'm meant to have money, but poverty is sitting at my table. And poverty is telling me, yeah, you're supposed to have money, but uh, you got to have wisdom to keep it. You ain't had no wisdom because every time he gave you money, you just poured it out into everything that you wanted. You ain't even consult him to ask him what to do with it. You spend it on everything that you want and what you got to show for it. Yeah, yeah, that's, I'm, I'm here. I'm representing. So these enemies are sitting at my table, and I'm like, Lord, I, I, why these spirits? Low self-esteem trudges on in, big and tall, and sits at my table. I'm just telling y'all how he gave it to me. Low self-esteem came and sat on in, big and tall. Took the end of the seat to make sure that I saw him eyeball to eyeball. Because of the fact that at the time, low self-esteem was my enemy because I gave my body to anybody and everybody that wanted it. Just so I could feel loved. Just because I wanted somebody to show me that they loved me. Even if it was just for a moment. Because no matter how many times my parents said that they loved me. Oh, they're my parents. They're supposed to tell me that. They're supposed to tell me that they love me. Don't everybody parents tell them that? And at the time, I didn't realize that everybody parents did that. But I thought that was their responsibility as my parents to let me know they love me. But when you're out there and you're young, sometimes when you're old, and you're looking for love in all the wrong places, not even realizing, but you'll be the first one that, that's talking about, I look good. Can't nobody tell me I don't look good. But yet your self-esteem is so low that you make sure that everybody see everything. But yet confidence wears itself. So if you have that esteem, you already know. I ain't got to show everything to know that I look good. Because uh, the clothes I'm wearing, I'm wearing them. They ain't wearing me. So that means no matter what I put on, I'm going to always look good. But low self-esteem sat there because I had dealt with it for so long. And it had grown so big that I didn't even realize how big low self-esteem was. I didn't realize how I had walked through my life this whole time. That's why I was so shy because I was the, the one that was a nerd and 
I was the one that never fit in, and I was the one that was heavy set, and I was the one that had braces and the big bottle glasses, and I was the one that didn't have the right clothes, and I was always that one. So that's the fact that I, I said, but, but, but. And so slowly, low self-esteem took over. And so when it came in the room and sat at the table, it sat at one of the head tables. And so I was like, Lord, okay, okay, I see, I see. And he was like, yeah, I prepared this table for you, but I also prepared it for them so that they can see what I'm about to do for you. Because next comes, thou anoint my head with oil. Ha! When I said, okay, I see where you going. Do you understand that everything that the enemy tried to put you through, when God anoints you, that it destroys all of that? He says his anointing destroys the yoke and breaks the bondage. So that means that when I'm being anointed by God, that that low self-esteem can't stay there. Depression can't stay there. Suicide can't stay there. Sickness can't stay there. Because the Almighty has anointed me to be at this table. He's anointed me to walk through what I went through. He anointed me to be able to come out of what I went through. So they had to be there to see that depression, you couldn't take me out. Suicide, you couldn't take me out. Low self-esteem, you definitely couldn't take me out. Lack, you couldn't take me out. Poverty couldn't take me out. Why? Because he had to appoint this day to anoint my head with oil. He had that day set aside just for me. This table that is spread, yeah, you here, but it's because you're here to honor me. <laughs> to honor what he put inside of me so you can see the anointing that's flowing from him down to me. So the next time you look at me, you won't see me, but you'll see him. That the anointing and the oil that he placed in me is purified because of who it flows from. Okay, I'm going to help somebody because of the fact that you feel like, well, I don't understand. I don't understand why all these enemies have to come at me. You know why? Because you were anointed for it. You are wondering why everybody else seemed like they got it all together. I don't care how old you are or how young you are. Nobody got it all together. It's all a facade. They fake and they phony. <laughs> Just to be real, they ain't going to tell you, so I'll tell you. They definitely ain't going to let you know, so I'll let you know for them. They fake and they phony. I'm going to help you out to show you how he anointed us for this. Go to Isaiah 53. I'm telling you, he's our provider. So can we talk? Because we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about the fact of what he did. Isaiah 53, we're going to start with verse 1. It says, who have believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He have no form, no comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord have laid on him the iniquity of us all. He took it all for us. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. <laughs> Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before he, her shears is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence. Neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. 
when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He did all that for you. He did all that for me. He did all that to make sure that our enemies saw us get anointed. Do you understand that he went through all that because of the love that he has for you? He went through all of that because he knew what he had to do. So can we, can we talk? In the NLT, it reads like this. Who has believed our message? To whom has the Lord revealed his powerful arm? My servant grew up in the Lord's presence like a tender green shoot, like a root in dry ground. There was nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance, nothing to attract us to him. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted in deepest grief. You think it didn't hurt him that he went through all that? It hurt you to go through what you go through. So it hurt him the same way. We turned our backs on him. We looked the other way. He was despised, and we did not care. At the time, we didn't care what he was going through. But yet, he still said, I'm your shepherd, and you shall not want. Yet, it was our weakness he carried. You're stronger than you think. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us like sheep have strayed away. We have left God's path to follow our own, yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. He was oppressed and treated harshly, yet he never said a word. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep is silent before the shears, he did not open his mouth. Unjustly condemned, he was led away. No one cared that he died without descendants, that his life was cut short in midstream. But he was struck down for the rebellion of my people. He had done no wrong and had never deceived anyone, but he was buried like a criminal. He was put in a rich man's grave. But it was God's good plan to crush him and cause him grief. Yet when his life is made an offering for sin, he will have many descendants. He will enjoy a long life, and the Lord's good plan will prosper in his hand. Do you understand all that he did? All that he did when he put your enemies before you at that table that he spread. Those enemies that I named, that poverty, that lack, that sickness, that disease, that low self-esteem, that depression, that suicide, that oppression, anything that is an enemy to you is an enemy to him. He put it all there and anointed you in front of them. And this is why my cup runneth over. I said, okay, I get it. When you break it down like that, Lord, I understand why my cup runs over every time I come into the house and I feel your presence. Because I can look back at all the things, all the things that were before me and realize that you did all that for me. And to show them that I can make it. To show them that you, they couldn't take me out. No matter how bad they wanted to, depression couldn't take me out. Suicide couldn't take me out because you had purpose. You had to anoint my head with oil so that I could tell somebody else how I came out of all the stuff that I was in. You anointed me in front of depression and suicide and low self-esteem to show them that they couldn't do anything to me. I was untouchable. <laughs> so that my cup can run over when I'm in your presence to realize how good you have been to me even when I wasn't good to you. Even when you weren't even on my mind, you still were that good to me. To be right there and still 
be my shepherd, still allow me not to want still, offer me peace, still offer me green pastures and still waters, still offer to restore my soul, still offer me righteousness. And they had to see it. Because a lot of people count you out. They know what you've been through. Divorce, they were like, oh, you ain't going to survive that. Ain't nobody going to want you. I should be in a relationship like that. I, I said, Can we talk? Because, okay. I should be in a relationship like that. Ain't nobody going to want you if I don't want you. If you don't be with me, I'm going to make sure nobody else be with you. Oh, and he meant that. He came up to my job. If I can't be with you, can't nobody else have you? Can we talk? I'm just late. I told y'all I can, I can tell y'all about me because we talking about relationship. Because the relationship with the Father will let us know that whatever relationship we're in that don't look like him is not the relationship you need to be in. He spread it all out before us in Psalms 23 to let us know that's the type of relationship you should be having. If you're looking on a, for an earthly relationship, that person should be able to protect you, provide for you, give you peace. And it's all because of who they're following. Because if they're not following God, they can't give you what they don't have. Okay. <laughs> they can't offer you what they don't have inside of them. Because if they ain't got Jesus, they can't offer you Jesus. They can't offer you that peace. They can't offer you that joy. What you're going to get from them is what they got. Anything that's been poured into them, they're going to pour into you. My cup is running over because of John 10.10 10, that says, The thief cometh not but for to kill, to steal, and destroy. I had come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. <laughs> I'm going to read it from the Amplified. John 10, 10 says, The thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. I come that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. So you telling me that that's part of my cup running over is because you want me to not only live life, but enjoy it. So that means if I'm in a relationship that's not allowing me to enjoy life, maybe I need to rethink that relationship. Maybe I need to rethink where I am. But I love him. But does he love you? And if the way that he's showing you love is not the way that God shows love, it might be a problem. And it says that I can have it in abundance, so I'm not just going to enjoy life. But it says that my life is going to be abundantly full and overflow. So if I'm walking around with my head held down, but for why though? If my relationship is what God ordained it to be, I should be walking with my head held high. I'm talking to, to singles, too. I know y'all probably thinking about, she's talking, talking to the married folks. Any relationship that you have with anybody, they should be helping encourage and uplift you, not pull you down. If they're not helping you get into that abundant life, enjoy life in the right way, in the Lord, then what kind of relationship is that? That's a relationship that's not built on a foundation. Because that relationship is going to fall apart eventually. Because it's not a sturdy foundation. It's built on the things of the past. I used to think love's supposed to look a certain way. Not the way that the Bible reads. Because I, I didn't grow up in, in the Word. I, I didn't grow up knowing who I was supposed to be, what, what the Word says I was supposed to find and that a husband's supposed to find me. I, I didn't grow up with, with all of this. So things that I thought was love, it was their definition of love, but it wasn't the type of love that I was supposed to be receiving. But because I didn't know that, I'd accepted what, what, whatever was given to me. I was like, okay with it. Maybe that's how it's supposed to be. 
even when I had the good example in the household, I still gravitated toward what I thought was supposed to be love. But let me tell you something. With all that you have been through, Isaiah 61 and 3 in the NLT says, to all who mourn, I'm sorry, that's the first verse, let me go. Yeah, to all who mourn in Israel, he will give a crown of beauty for ashes, a joyous blessing instead of mourning, festive praise instead of despair. In their righteousness, they will be like great oaks that the Lord has planted for his own glory. Do you understand that even though you're going through it, gone through it, or maybe contemplating staying in it, that he's giving you an opportunity to come out of it? Isaiah 61 says in the KJV version, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the joy, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. He wants to give you beauty for everything that you've been through. He wants to give you joy for everything that caused you mourning. He wants you to put on the garment of praise for every time that you felt depression. Because verse 6 of Psalms 23 says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Can we talk? Because when it comes to that relationship, goodness and mercy should be following you. You should want to dwell in his house because he already established his role as the provider. He established his role as your peace. He established his role as your protector. He established his role as your anointer. He established his role as the one that will cause you to have your cup run over. So goodness and mercy can follow you because you have allowed that relationship to come forth. You allowed him to be your provider and your protector. You allowed that relationship to build and grow. You allowed that relationship to cultivate into what it needed to be. You didn't push it away but yet you embraced it. Can we talk about it? Can we talk about those relationships that we need to cultivate? And this is the one. I told you I wouldn't be before you long. I just wanted to share that with you. That sometimes when the Lord says, can we talk? It's because he wants to be close to you. When you're in a relationship with somebody, a good relationship, they should want to want to spend time with you, be around you, be up under you sometimes. Sometimes you don't even have to say anything. They just want to be in your presence. Because it's not that they need your presence. They need your presence. And sometimes that's all he wants from you is your presence. Because of the fact that he loves you that much. And he wants to give you so much. Because your relationship with him is valuable. He loves that relationship. That's why he did all that he did. That's why he took all the stripes for your sickness. That's why he took all the bruising for your iniquity. Because he values the relationship. You mean something to him. If you don't mean nothing to anybody else, you mean something to him. Take value with who you are and whose you are. Because he values you. Can we talk about it? that relationship with the Father. 
is unlike any other. That's why I get excited. And that's why I got so excited when the dance ministry <laughs> ministered to that song because of what I went through and because of the relationship I now have with the Father. Last week, we celebrated Father's Day. But do you know you can celebrate it every day? Because you have a Father in heaven who cares so much about you that he took the time that he had you on his mind to say that you are fearfully and wonderfully made in his image and in his likeness. He values you and the relationship that y'all have. Spend time with him. Love on him. Talk to him. Sometimes just sit there. Sometimes I can't even think of the words to say. And I'll just sit back and say thank you. Because of the fact that he did all that. Even when he knew I didn't care. He went through all that. Even when he knew I turned my back on him. He took all that. Because he knew that one day, eventually, he was going to be able to prepare that table in the presence of my enemies. He was going to be able to anoint my head with oil, and my cup was going to run over. He knew that all, all that back then, when I didn't want to have anything to do with him, he still wanted to have something to do with me. So on today, just evaluate your relationship. Sit down with him and ask him, can we, can we talk? Can we talk, God? I'm dealing with some things right now. Can, can we talk? Because I don't know who else to turn to. I know my mother will listen to me, but I just need to hear from you. Can, can we talk? My friends are available, but... I don't think I can tell them everything, but I know I can tell you everything. And it's going to be between me and you. Can, can we talk and I just be real with you on where I'm at right now? Sometimes I don't feel you like I want to. Some, sometimes I don't feel like you hear me when I'm, when I'm talking to you. Some, sometimes I feel like I'm out here by myself. And I'm lost. I, I got people all around me, but they, they, they don't understand. They say they do, but I, I, I don't really think they do. Can, can, can we talk? Things are looking kind of rough right now, you know. I'm doing everything I can. I'm doing the best I can. And I'm working and I'm trying to pay this bill and trying to pay that bill. But it seemed like I got more months than money. And Can, can, can we talk? Because I love this guy, and I feel like he, he loves me, but, I, you know, sometimes he get a little angry, and, and I don't know that side of him. I don't, I don't like that side of him, and I just don't understand how to break that relationship. Can, can we talk? I'm with this girl, and, you know, my mama don't like her, and I don't know why. You know, is it something that she see that I, I don't see? Can you show it to me? Because I, I don't see what she see. Can, can we talk? My husband acting up. and I prayed and I'm praying, Lord, but it don't seem like a change is coming. Can, can you help me right now? Because it don't seem like things are lining up, but you said if I trust in you, you said if I acknowledge you, you said can, can we talk? My wife used to do this and take care of the kids and take care of the house. And now she act like she don't even want to be around me. She don't have two minutes for me. Everything else is more important than me. Lord, can, can, can we talk?
So today, in your free time, just take the time to ask him, can we talk? Because that relationship is valuable. So today, if you don't know him as your personal Lord and Savior, the one who forgave all of your failures, even the ones you haven't even committed yet, he's still forgiving those as well. Today's your opportunity to give your life to him. Today, you can say, yes, I want to talk. I want to get to know you for myself. I want to build that relationship. I got to start somewhere. So why not start today? And why not start now? If you say, yeah, I, I talk to him. But somehow our communication it's kind of been off. Somehow, it gets lost in translation when we talk. I'm missing some things. Maybe he's missing and not understanding. But somehow, we're not on the same page. Do you know he's married to the backslider? The one who kind of pushed away from the table? The one who talks but doesn't listen? He's married to the, to the backslider that sits in church, comes and hears the word, but doesn't do the word. Today's your opportunity to rebuild that relationship with him. To rebuild that communication. To remove those barriers out of the way. Now, if you say, I'm, I'm saved, I'm not a backslider, if you just need prayer, for somebody to touch and agree with you that your relationship with the Father is going to change from this point on. That when y'all talk, that you won't be the only one talking, that you allow him to talk back to you. That you also listen. If you want a new relationship with him and you just need somebody to touch and agree with you, that you're going to walk into a new relationship. Then we have ministers that's available, that's willing and ready to pray with you. You're not in it alone. If you're watching on live stream, we have people online that will pray with you and pray for you. All he wants to do is talk. And he wants to talk to you. So you have three petitions. One, if you want to give your life to Christ. Two, if you backslid it and you want to return back home. And three, if you just want prayer. And Father, we thank you. Father, we honor you. Father, we glorify you. And we magnify your name. We thank you that on today, you remind us that you are available to talk. You remind us of who you are, all that you have done, and how important we are to you. You reminded us why we love you and why you love us. We thank you on today that the door of opportunity has been opened for us to talk, to communicate with you, and you to communicate with us. Our hearts are open to receive from you. We bless your name on today as you are worthy, Father. We repent if we haven't talked to you. We repent if we haven't listened to you. And we thank you that you cast it all into the sea of forgetfulness. As you forgive us, as we forgive others. Father, we thank you that unforgiveness will be at the table as you anoint our heads. So they cannot be in our heart. We bless you on today for all that you have done. 
we glorify you like never before. And we say that it is so in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Well, now, <laughs> it's one of the best times to sow. Sow into your new. Sow into that new relationship. Sow into that new bond that you're going to have with the shepherd, the provider, the protector, the peace. If you're watching my live stream, I thank you for joining us. We have three opportunities, three ways to give. One is by cash app, dollar sign, gifts, God, G-I-F-T-S, G-O-D. Another way that you can give is by PayPal at giftsofgodmen at yahoo.com. The third way to give is by our website. It is secure, and that's giftsofgodministry.org. We thank God for you joining us. We pray that you were blessed on today that something was said or done that caused your spirits to be uplifted, encouraged, and that will allow you to get through the week. If you want to join us again, we'll be here on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Whatever social media platform you're watching from, you can join us again at that time. And we pray that you have a blessed week. Thank you for joining us on social media. Be blessed. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, Lord. Lord, we just want to thank you for this offering on today in the tithing of this house, Lord. We just want to thank you for this offering for the updating of your kingdom, even you more, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen, hallelujah. I'm going to turn it over. Apostle, you have anything you want to share? Okay. <laughs> well, we thank God for each of you joining us. We praise God. Do we have any visitors, any first-time visitors? Does anybody want to join this awesome church that hadn't joined already? Okay. <laughs> I just want to make sure that y'all know that the door.